Hello everyone and Happy New Year. It is Thursday, February the 4th, 2021. I'm John Kosar from Asbury Research and Asbury Investment Management and this is your Daily Five. These are my five most important charts and data series for this week. Number one, market internals, the Asbury 6. The Asbury 6 is one of two in-house tactical models that we use at Asbury Research to try to answer the question, should I be invested? And here's the Asbury 6. What we have here are six different indicators, only one of which, ha one of which has to do with price, which is the rate of change on the S&P 500. And the other five are what I would call secondary indicators investor asset flows, corporate bond spreads, market breadth, and so on. Uh, we did some back testing and found that these six indicators work very well with each other in terms of when one indicator gives a false signal, because uh, there's no perfect indicator that works all the time. The other five will tend to pick it up. And the other thing we wanted to avoid is all of the tail chasing, I think, that goes on now with the increased volume every day going into algorithmic trading, which is why you get the S&P opening up 50 one day and down 50 the next. Um, using a lot of these secondary indicators takes away a lot of that noise and actually becomes kind of a lie detector test for the market. So we have dates in each of these cells. If they're positive, they're green and the date that they turn positive. If they're negative, they are red and the date that they turn negative. Four or more metrics in one direction indicates a tactical bias. The Asbury 6 has been blinking lately. What does that mean? It's been changing a lot from red to green to red over the past week or two. That usually means the market's at an indecision point and it's at some kind of an inflection point where the next significant trend, either up or down, is likely to begin. But right now they are positive. And you can see they've turned positive pretty quickly. Just since the very start of the month, you see a lot of February 1st, February 2nds in here. In fact, they're all February 1st and 2nds. Here's why. The benchmark S&P 500 is at a tactical decision point. And here it is. Here's the S&P 500. The last time I was um, on Your Daily Five, which I think was a couple of months ago or six weeks ago, we talked about a bullish breakout in the S&P 500 that happened on November the 9th, and we said it gave us a target of 3850. That target was met just about two weeks ago. And since then, we have come down to test the 50-day moving average, which for most people is the minor trend. So a couple of things going on in this chart. Number one, once upside targets are met, I'm always on the lookout for some kind of a correction because I'm not the only person who knows how to read charts. Once targets are met, you get some profit taking, um, which is selling and put some downward pressure on the market. So here's what happened. We came right down to the 50 day uh, moving average over the past four days. Uh, 37.29 is where it is currently located. You can see the market saw it um, and kind of reacted to it, held there for four days. And then you had some new buying come in. That was the move to green or um, positive in the Asbury 6 that I showed you in the previous slide. So basically hit our target, came down to hit support. We had some new impetus to buy coming in, which showed up in the Asbury 6. As long as we hold 37.29, the minor trend is still intact. If we break the minor trend and the Asbury 6 goes to negative, that would be an indication to us that we're beginning a correction. ETF asset flows in the spider is one of those Asbury 6, and I wanted to pull that one out and take a closer look at it. That was the red entry on the Asbury 6 a couple of slides back. This is the SPX here, the um, cash S&P here, the index itself up top. And down at the bottom is the daily total net assets invested in SPY. So what we do is we look at that and then we overlay a 21 day moving average on it because 21 days is our 
tactical time period here at Asbury Research. And what we found is when we go into monthly contraction, as we had here between October 26th and November 3rd, and then again at the beginning, well, actually a whole lot of December, um, at the least the S&P 500 stops going higher. And more often than not, it actually has a decline. We had a short-lived one here on October 26th and November 3rd, but it took the market down a ways. This was a decent move, if you recall. So here we are now. Since January the 26th, we're in monthly contraction in those assets. Um, and we actually, yesterday, we actually lost some assets. You could see the little curve here at the end. As long as we stay in monthly contraction, that warns that the S&P 500 is not going to be able to put together any kind of a sizable rebound off of the 50-day moving average, which we showed you on the last chart. So we're watching this one like a hawk. If we see this stay in monthly contraction, and then we see the other Asbury 6 starting to turn red again, that's going to be a heads up for us that we may be going into a corrective period, and that would be confirmed if we go through the 50-day moving average in the S&P 500, of course. Um, sector asset flows uh, is another one of my five for this week. Financials and energy are still attracting money. In the last Your Daily Five that I did, I talked about our SEAF model. S-E-A-F stands for Sector ETF Asset Flows. And what that does, it measures the biggest percentage of assets in, um, which are the two green, um, in each time period, trading, tactical and strategic, which is five days, 21 days, and 63 days. The green is the two biggest percentage assets in for that time period, and the red is the biggest two percentage assets out. So what all this means is since November the 12th, the biggest percentage of assets in has been in financials and energy. That's where the money's going in the sector space. And since November 12th, XLE, which is the energy sector spider, has risen by 20.3%, outperforming the S&P by 14.8%. XLF, which is the financials sector spider, uh, is up 8.9% outright and has outperformed the S&P 500 by 3.9%. So there is a definite connection between where the money is going and what happens to these sectors individually and also relative to the benchmark S&P 500. These also show that the trend of outflows um, is from consumer staples and technology. So we're staying away from those sectors right now and we're looking for opportunities in financials and energy. Finally, I don't think you could talk about February without mentioning seasonality. Seasonality in the S&P 500 is weak during February. You can see February is the second weakest month of the year in the S&P 500 based on seasonal data going back to 1957. Another interesting thing here is it's in uh, kind of a cluster of strength here that really starts in December, which is the third strongest month, and extends to April, which is the strongest month. But the point is, February is historically weak. Uh, the S&P 500 is hanging on to its fingernails on the S&P uh, on, on the 50-day moving average. We have the Asbury 6 is green, but we're starting to get asset flows out of the spider. So this is a really important place to pay attention. This is either where the S&P 500 is going to recover and we're going to ignore seasonality for this year and we're going to move into April higher and higher. Or again, if the assets continue to come out of SPY, um, the Asbury 6 turns red and we break the 50-day, we'll probably be getting some kind of uh, corrective decline that could be nasty because the market is very overextended. So there's your daily five for this week. Have a great rest of the week and we'll see you next time. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.